Welcome back to another episode of Pound for Pound. I am the Nigerian Nightmare, Kamaru Usman. And the one and only Triple C. And today we have a very, very special guest, the bad guy. Guys, we have, we are so proud to have Mr. Tail uncle. Wow. P. No, uncle. uncle. Oh, you call him Uncle. uncle. That was very uncle. sweet. See, that, <laughs> I feel like, like Uncle was a little disrespectful. <laughs> You know, no, Chell, no, you, really, Chell, are you still hanging on to the young guy or are you good you with know, Uncle? Oh man, I tell you, now I gotta wear glasses. Like, these are not a fashion statement, <laughs> okay. by the way. Uncle. These are prescription glasses. Man. Uncle Chell P. <laughs> Sonnen. There you go. Come on, guys. Come on, everybody. I appreciate Just it. I appreciate it, man. I'm thrilled to be here. A Shot of Lime production. about Francis for a minute because it's relevant to you. Francis Absolutely. put out a piece and he said that you loaned him 200 grand and not only was that a freaking cool move by you, but Man's rich, dude. I did not fully understand that that, I, I heard the story told about how Francis risked everything. I didn't understand. I didn't know he was in the hole. I didn't know that he bet on himself to that degree. The, the crazy thing about that, Chip, first of all, I, I, I hate even talking about that. And I, I didn't like the fact that he brought it up. That was twice now he's brought up in two different settings. and I, Which I means really, he's appreciative. I didn't really like it. Even if it embarrassed you, it but, means he's appreciative. Yeah, because, you know, on the other hand, you look at my social media now, I got DMs from, from aunts and uncles oh. I didn't know I had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my little something. That's what hey, you mean. Okay. Hey, I know what I'm calling now. I'm calling this, right. dude. I'm in the That's home. Right. Right. No, but it, with, with something like that, it's, um, you know, it was just a situation to where, as you know, Chill, when we fight and we go out here and we prepare, we, we already incurred a, incurred a bill you know, that you, that you have before you actually step in there to fight. And then once you are like myself and Francis to where you have extended families in a different country, you know, now that, that, that check runs very, very thin. And of course you're talking, you're getting paid before taxes, all these things that people never really think about. And so in his situation, having one fight every eight, nine months, that's kind of tough sure. to be able to deal with. So you know, it is what it is. I never want to speak. I, I, I never speak on it, you know. So um, I didn't like that he did that. But, you know, like you mentioned, it, it does show that he's appreciative. And, and that's... He was he was saying that to let you to let you know that. I'm sorry if I put you in a worse spot. But that's how he meant. And by the way, I, I just I guess I just didn't understand. I mean, we're, here we're talking about Francis because he's getting ready to perhaps fight Joshua. Joshua is an Olympic medalist. He's a world champion. He's experienced. He's beaten Klitschko. Francis has no business in there with him is what I would normally say had he not done what he did with Fury. He is a very live cat in this fight. Yeah, but one thing you have to Can say about Can you believe about that? You Absolutely. One thing you have to say about Francis is Francis is not the typical MMA fighter. Sure. When you literally are blessed with everyone gets in there in the ring or in the cage with a pistol, these pistols. Sure. Well, Francis has a shotgun. Everything in life is a trade. If you're the big strong guy, you don't get to be the cardio guy. It doesn't work that way. Francis went 30 <laughs> minutes with that shotgun. Come on, yeah, you're an exception. So yeah, you can laugh at what I said, but for everybody else, I'm telling you, you want to know the greatest poster ever made? The black-white conflict in America still makes people uncomfortable because the greatest poster ever made was you, Adesanya, and Ngano, and it was I, and, you, and it was called something, but about the brotherhood. It, it was talking about Africa. It was the most powerful, and somebody got nervous about how far they could go with that, and it bothered me because it was the greatest. When you three kings, that's what it said. It said three kings on it. Look, dude, those but are the their messy channels. Holding up that fist <laughs> yeah. uh, with that black glove. <laughs> You're right. And that's it. That's all you had to do. Right. Well, uh, uh, Duplessis versus Adesanya. That was melting airwaves when they started talking about Africa. I'm the white African. I'm the real African. I'm the black. And they didn't. people didn't know how to do it. Everybody wanted it. It was great. But no one knew how to monitor that. That was melting airwaves. That was so Absolutely. fire. It was. It was. I mean, um, speaking of that, let's. A big thing about being in the cage now is, is um, me and Henry, we talked about this uh, last week, is Chael, as a wrestler, you know, you started wrestling at the age of what, nine? Yep. Nine. And, of course, you, you know, high school, how many state titles did you win? I know, uh, none. I think it's what kept me so hungry. Yeah. How I'm many, lost in the finals. Uh, and you went to uh, Oregon University State? University of Oregon. University of Oregon. How many uh, national titles did you get? 
I got two in Greco, and people people say I shouldn't say that because Greco doesn't count. But I went to University Nationals; it was a big goal. I won a couple. They give me outstanding wrestler; it's a big deal. Uh, I was all American one time, though. To answer that question. Okay. Now, me and Henry in our last fight were taken down a couple times, and there's this transition that I feel just watching and, and studying the sport. There's been this transition of of the wrestlers that dominated at the top of the sport. So, in a sense. The wrestlers were kind of the, the, those couple that dominated were the representative for USA Wrestling or American Wrestling 100%. In, in MMA. And for a while it was, you know, the Randy Couture's, the, you know, you guys and, and DC. And, you know, for a moment there, it was Henry, of course. I believe, truly believe Henry can't ever put that title down. Sure. He's an Olympic gold medalist. So every time you step out there, you have to represent American wrestling and US, USA wrestling. So do you see, based on us being taken on our last fight, do you think that we still kind of are at the forefront of representing that American wrestling? If we're to be fair with ourselves, I think that the biggest advantage wrestlers have, and I think it's been this way for a period of time, maybe a decade or more, is the grind, the work ethic, understand it, making weight, the lifestyle. I think that was the biggest thing that wrestlers had. As far as the takedown goes, if you broke it down by the numbers, it's double egg, 90-some percent, and there's not a lot of other wrestling that works. He'll hit an inside trip here or there, but you're just not seeing much of that that dirty boxing that Randy did. You know, there, there is some wrestling that happens on the cage and on the feet that doesn't maybe go all the way to the ground but yeah man these other guys have done a very good job of understanding but but i wanted to make that point of understanding you don't have to know how to wrestle but if you can stop a double leg that's gonna that's gonna stop most wrestlers and and i will tell you bigger problem for me wasn't if a guy gave me a hard time taking him down it's if he knew how to spring right back up because if i got on top I needed a second. It was cardio-wise the most <laughs> exhausting thing you could do. Hey, Even I think, as a wrestler. Yes, I fuck. feel like you and Colby they acknowledge that real know, quick and man. go, you know what? <laughs> I'm not wasting that energy. I think you both felt that and then just went to war. Your first fight with Colby is the dirtiest. That, oh my God, I've never even talked to you. Colby got fouled. You walked out and, oh my God, come on. He, that was the dirtiest best, closest, most controversial fight. That Dana would have remade that at the press conference, but there was a rumor going around that, that Colby had a broken jaw, so Dana couldn't do it. That was amazing. I remember being there. My mother flew out. It was incredible. And by the way, I can't pinpoint and get the way you did and then look like, yeah, I did that. What do you want to do? Are we good? That was more impressive. I could not believe. I'm like, God damn, Kamar is an athlete. Your way that you recovered against Gilbert Burns, by the way, that's not the way fights go. And I say, I, when I talk about you, I give him the same thing when you, you guys aren't together. You could recompose in the heat of battle, and Henry could recompose. That is so incredibly rare in all of sport, let alone ours. Tyson Fury did it. It's what we were complimenting him after the third round, but it's rare. You couldn't find five guys in history that can get hurt and then snap out of it tonight. Yeah. Come back, come back different, and come back yeah. different in that next round coming up. I think, I think that's the ability, especially as a wrestler. And you know, in this thirty-second break, you're losing. You're down by six. You're down by three. You have to do something different because the first two to three minutes isn't working. And I think that's something that we got to get credit as wrestlers. That it's what it is. It's like it, if there's something that wrestling has taught us is. Is the fact that you have a limited, a limited of time and a lot more limited than we do in the actual fight, so we had to be able to make those adjustments at that point in time. You're right, but it, it's still rare. I mean, pe people break all the time. It's so hard to do. Kale Sanderson's never had to do it. Now he never held out with that same adversity. But I'm just saying. I mean, the real great Gable Steves. A lot of guys don't have to do it. They don't end up in that. In that spot, Kamar didn't know he was going to get clipped by by Gilbert, be on wobble legs, and then have to come. I mean, I'm just sharing. Like when I watched that, I'll tell you the first time it ever happened in MMA. See if you guys are, are hardcore fans enough to know this. But Randy <laughs> Couture was falling apart against Pedro Hizzo in their first dude, fight. Dude, dude, yeah, yeah, that was. I remember. No that. one he was got, more he, surprised he than got like the shit out of him. He, yeah, he, and like he just couldn't recover. He got exhausted, and when you get exhausted, you can't. Re it doesn't happen. You got to go to the back, take three months, come back and try again. And but he did recoup, and it was the first time that it happened. And then I've seen you reset, and you know you with Gilbert. By the way, what was Jemayev like? What was he like? Was he different? Was he special? Yeah, chill. You know, you just you you get in those those type of fights and those positions to where you 
you build something up in your mind, in your head. And everyone's, especially now in this machine of the UFC, of MMA, you build them up in your head. Then you get in there and you go, that wasn't that, that wasn't special. There was nothing different that I haven't seen. Had I given it a little bit more, had I given myself a little bit more credit, that would have totally A little totally bit more time. Different. Now, I know something about you that other people don't because you haven't talked about. Can I bring Can I bring it up here? You shared this private with me at Eagle. That's the only clue I can give you. Can I bring it up here? Sure. What? You. What is it? The print what? <laughs> you hear the things people say. You hear the things people say in the yeah, media. Yeah, yeah, you hear yeah. the things they say yeah. uh, online. It, you only had eight days to hear it, but you heard for the first time in years that you were not going to win. You, for the first time in years... We're a two to one dog as opposed to a two to one favorite. After now that it's done, do you look back and have any part of it where you said, "I doubted myself"? Did you? You did believe some of that. Okay, one hundred percent. It gets to you, right? It, it's it's like it's like you you looking at comments and you see ninety nine comments and say you're the greatest, and then you it's just like wrestling. We don't remember all the people we beat, but you you remember those those tough ones in the finals that you lost. And it's kind of one of those, those situations where it's, I haven't heard that in a while. And of course, coming off of losing my title, it's like, do I, you know, you want to assess everything. Do I, do I change? Do I do this? Do I do that? Am I really that guy? Am I not that guy? Am I big enough? Am I not big enough? You know, yes, I asked for more time with the UFC, but they didn't really give it to me. Now I have nine days. What do I do? So I was carrying a little bit of that until I was in the back. Finally, you see, warming up, I'm like, fuck this. Let's let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go make it happen. Let's go make it happen. We get out there and right away he takes a shot. And I'm just like, oh shit. He's a little bigger sure. than I thought of. But nothing special. And he's on top, and I'm like, these these strikes don't really hurt. Nothing special. And then I got up to my feet, and it was the first punch I hit him with. I'm like, oh, okay. I can't do this. But it was after the end of the fight, it was just in my head saying, why? Why did I doubt myself? You should don't do that again. I only ask you, and I hope I didn't embarrass you with that. When you have an average viewer sees that you, the world should goes through that, I just think they're going to find it interesting. Every, everyone has to deal with that, but they think that we don't, that we're, we're special. A lot of times we hide it. But I just, I just think that people, I think that is a helpful thing to hear that everybody questions himself and needs a reinforcement. Of that. Yeah, you yeah, know, of course. And I think we always, as athletes, whether you're the best in the world or not, there's, you know, it's like, it's like Mike Tyson always says it. It's like, you know, your mind is not your friend. You know, like your mind will try to manipulate you. Like it, it, it will, it will try to sabotage you and do whatever it is. It's your belief, and it's if it's it's you really going in there and really pulling the best out of you to the best of your ability. And nor will it ever happen. But I, I think what I found interesting with you too, Chell, is obviously there's, you're different. And I think if, you know, there's a big saying, if you're not first, you got to be different. And in reality, you brought something into mixed martial arts that a lot of people didn't bring in. And you know what it was? The persona. I appreciate that. You know, you may be the bad guy the to the world, but the I, I wouldn't right? be calling you Uncle Chell for no reason, <laughs> Uncle Chell. So, so I just want to know, what is it that really sparked the figure of when is it just like, all right, man, I have to change. We all know Kobe. Kobe was getting ready to get cut. Sure. Obviously, he's from Oregon as well. Well, as speak for yourself first. Yeah. yeah. We'll get into that guy. That's well, the way. And I, we'll guys, I've been that asked guy. that, and everybody wants to have some kind of contribution. And if, if that's the one I made and I, I helped the spirit, I mean, I, I want it. I want the credit, right? You don't get remembered for very many things. So, uh, but I have to look back because it wasn't a conscious effort. And when somebody asked me, Henry, you've even asked me, and I know when it was time-wise, I was getting ready to fight Yushin Okami, who went on to be a good friend and training partner of mine. But he was ranked number two in the world. He was the last guy to beat Anderson Silva. I mean, he was the guy. I was ranked number nine. Oh, so he's the one that leg locked him. Yes. Uh, uh, no. You know what? Anderson actually cheated. He got disqualified. <laughs> Okay. But Okami still beat him. He still was the one that beat him. It's ranked number two. Cleaned out everybody. I'm ranked number nine for the first time ever. That was, that's a big deal. That was like the biggest thing that I had done. We were second or third fight of the night. We were on the undercard fighting at four o'clock. And it was infuriating. It was infuriating. And I blamed him. He refuses to do this. He won't do interviews. He won't call and do media. He won't. And um, 
And I was just on Ariel's show, pure, and I, all I did was blame him. I didn't curse or put him down. I said, man, this guy won't do interviews. Blah, blah. But at that time in 2009, that was so disrespectful in our sport. It was so rude and unsportsmanlike that I, I said that. Um, I mean, it was a very small thing, like by now standards, but it, it was a big deal back then. I, I kept with that. I got called the, the, the uh, greatest <laughs> HIT talker in all of sports by Sports Illustrated. Right? That's, that's like a real title when they say it. But I had never cursed. I have never used a four-letter word publicly, ever. I had a guy in Nevada named Keith Kaiser. He was an executive director at the time that did not want to license me because of how disrespectful I was, what a bad example I was for kids. We had a private meeting, and he said that. Wow. And I I almost wanted to apologize. I mean, in hindsight, like, you an idiot. And he turned out he was. He got fired. But, uh, but at the time, I thought, well, you know, I... Shouldn't be doing this. And yeah, and it spread. I went to Massachusetts, a uh, Shogun, and I had the same thing where I had to get lawyers to go to the commission to get a license because of things I had said. Yeah, no but cursing no, 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 but, but can I tell you what you started, Chuck? Because in reality, a lot of it, you're either a crazy motherfucker that didn't know much about or just wanted to fight and your life was just dedicated to fighting, or you're a businessman dedicated to the art and the competition of the fight game and you took it a lot further you know i i go back and i think of my career chell and i was like because at one point you know i was trying to be the olympian i was trying to be that honorable yeah. you know the jordan yeah, you burrows or david taylor yes, you know you what were. uncle chell you called me out you know no, what i know this little this smurf yeah. i know this dude this dude is this dude you know I, i'm trying to be proper because when, when you win an olympic gold medal like you do want to carry yourself at a certain standard because you know that all eyeballs are on you. But at the same time, it's like you go back and you think of a guy like Kurt Angle. A guy like Kurt Angle who really who was Olympic gold medals, who was annoying, who was cocky, you know, self-absorbing, just anything that you could think of. But to go back, I'm thinking of Uncle Cho. He was picking on me. And now I was like, I know this guy's a good dude. I know what he's doing. It's annoying the shit out of me. But at the same time, who am I as a fighter? And you know what I did, Cho? I accepted. I accepted your offer. I'm I like, you know what? And I remember. And I remember the first time that I saw Cho. Uh, you know, at this time, you know, uh, Cho was over here picking on me. He's over here. Hey, don't be like Henry Cejudo, X, Y, Z. I'm just listening to everything because this is what I needed. So then I remember at one time we were in Las Vegas. This is back maybe 2016 or all that time, or maybe I had just beat. Or I was getting ready to fight Demetrius Johnson. And I remember you were with your wife, and I believe it was your mom. And I remember, and I, I remember going up to you, yep. and I'm like, and I remember when I went up to you, you, you kind of like, were like, you're like surprised a little bit. You saw me, you know, because you're thinking I'm over here getting call me out. Yeah, yeah I'm over here mm -hmm. getting ready to call you out in front of your mom and, and your wife. <laughs> but then I just went up to you, was like, Joe, he's like, teach me, tell me. Yep. Tell me how is it that I could really do? Because I, I understand what you're saying. And Wait. I, I, yeah. And Are you there, making it confessing that he's responsible for you pulling a rabbit bit, out yeah. of the bag? Uncle <laughs> Chill, <laughs> dude. Uncle Chill. Yeah, I am making it confessing. He gave me some credit. Yeah, I'm exactly. pulling the snake. <laughs> when he pulled the, uh, I mean, when he <laughs> saved the division, when he saved he, 125, yes, yes. he actually gave me Credit it made me feel, it made me feel great. You know, it's like he wins the Olympics and he shared that with <laughs> Terry Brand. So yeah, I got to be a little bit part of that. You know, you know, Kamara was mad at me one time. Did he ever tell you about that? <laughs> did did he did he delete you off of Twitter no, too like I did? He called me out though too. Here's exactly exactly what happened. What did I, what Kamara happened? Kamara Usman is getting ready to fight T Wood. Okay, I got to do the analysis for it. Okay, great. Whatever he's good at, T Wood's better. At least on paper. Let me explain. He is a national champion. Division two. T Wood, Division One. He is ranked number one in the world. T Wood is the champion of the world. He has won 15 fights. T Wood has eight. I'm not just breaking down the numbers. Kamara beats him, wins all five rounds. Comes up to ESPN. He won't look. He's looking forward. I'm sitting right here. I'm like, hey man, great job. And he goes, I heard the he things. Like, he goes, I heard you. the things you've been saying. <laughs> and I said, bad things. And he said, little salty. He's looking straight <laughs> forward. And I said, Kamara. I woke up this morning believing you were the second best fighter alive. I wake up tomorrow knowing you're the best fighter alive. I don't think either one of those is bad. And he turns to me and goes, yeah, you're right. And we started talking. We've been friends ever since. Yeah, <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, Did I tell uh, that yeah, correctly? You're, you're, you're right. You're right. I, I think it's... um. When you're when you're so when you're so in the mix and <laughs> you're, you're you're so in the mix and you're you're just consumed by everything and you have this 
delusional goal in your head that only you know and you you know where you're at and others don't see it yet but of course you you don't as i want to say you're sensitive you're, you're an artist and you're sensitive about your craft that you've been building for for years and so when you hear someone kind of maybe make a comment that you're not that guy you're not good enough you know as an artist i i, I do think it takes a certain level of maturity to be able to okay who cares? Yeah. No, you. I, I'm, I was sensitive about my craft because it was, I've spent years dedicating my life, everything to this. You know, I skip, my mom used to call me, I skip meals for this. And no one skips a mom's home cooking. Yeah. <laughs> I skip, I, I told mom no several times, you know, and just when all, all I see is all the times where, you know, I'm not supposed to be this good at wrestling. I'm not supposed to be that good. You started in high school. And I just, I just see myself, all the times I locked myself in the bathroom, using up all the hot water with trash bags on, just trying to get that sure. extra weight off, and all these and things. I, and I'm not giving an and analysis I felt of that. you. I'm giving an yes. insult to you. Of yeah, course. Right. But that's, I, how, I, I, that's what you take, that's what you take it as, because yeah. you're just so sensitive about yeah. the crap. So, you know, it, it took a certain level of maturity to get there, to understand that, you know, you weren't saying that I, I suck or right. I was trash. You were just saying... Know, right now, this is the best guy. The rankings got it right. Yeah, it, it took time for for me to understand that. Not that's a level of maturity in the yeah. process that people have. And by to the way, through. you you had a very long road by uh, normal state, in my opinion. I mean, coming through the ultimate for which you went 15 straight. We thought you were undefeated. Turned out you took a loss somewhere that like nobody saw. I mean, I, I'm just saying, you know, you, you're beating guys like Sean Strickland turned out to be the best guy in the world, but people don't know it, so you don't get credit for it. It wasn't even a main event. I mean, I, when I look at everything that you had to do, uh, being backup fighters before you finally get into that spot, but I never heard you talk about feeling slighted i never heard you talk about having a, a resentment or uh, is dana picking on me i never heard anything like that did i miss it you must have felt have it to, at times have, yeah 100 percent. and and same way i felt about you i felt that way about dana as well early on until i actually got to sit with dana and have a conversation and understand that's what i mean by the maturity you understand that not only is this just fighting this is a business yeah well. but, but can i tell you something too Kamaru? i feel like now because you use the word artist I feel like now that we're older, you understand the you understand the game. I try not to cuss in front of Uncle Chow, but it's trying to come out the motherfucking game. Sure, like you know what I'm saying. Like now you understand the game, so you it, 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 it there is an art to it, and you can't just be a fighter. You also there has to be a slight of entertainer, and I think at the beginning for Kamaru, is he was just a fighter. He paved his way. He was on a crazy, a crazy. Uh, win streak where he literally earned it and i think the way he earned it he caught more of dana white's respect yep. yeah yeah and and I shout out to uh, i have to i have to give him shout out to dominic cruz because i oh, i remember no don't do that I, no, just no, just for the, for don't the advice do that, just for dude, the no. advice come on for have the you guys advice. ever made up because because I, that dude actually, hate on you in that no, interview dude i saw dude. I, I actually, that's, what, that's what i thought i was like you know what i'm doing this shit for kamaru too <laughs> I'm, put, I'm about to put that no 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 i'm just for the advice i i sat with him i remember I, I was, you know, going through all this and I was, you know, should be getting a top 15 guy. They, they promised that several times and I didn't get one. And they're making me fight this jujitsu guy who I felt at the time they thought, okay, could catch him. He's just a wrestler. This guy could catch him and, you know, get him off our radar. And I remember I was so upset and I got to the meeting and Dominic Cruz was actually commentating that fight. And he said, listen, if you have to take it the hard way, Guess what? Do that. Because by the time you get there, you would have been through everyone. Sure. So when you become champion, there's not anyone that you can't handle. There's no style that you haven't seen. You just have to see the bright side of it. And it was something in that to where I said, you know what? I'm going to go knock this asshole out. And yep, first round, I put him face first. Actually, he did a, car, a front roll, you know, when I, when I knocked him out. So it was just something about understanding that. Yeah. You know, this is the business. And I think that's a big part of what's going on now. Yeah. Uh, my question for you is, as you watch the sport start to change now, how do you feel about the sport going? Because as wrestlers, we're, we're taught, you you know, you have that martial arts, you have that respect first, you know. And like you said, when you were started to come out, people didn't like that. 
like how do you feel about the sport now and how these young guys now are coming into the sport? Yeah. I know exactly what you're asking. And 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 not only and as wrestler, we all suffered for this to, to some degree that, that that's on sport. You don't so much as throw headgear. You don't so much as take your strap down, man. There's an etiquette. You shake that in, you shake the coach's hand. There's a way that you do it. And um we also came from a competitive architecture where there is going to be a straight line bracket and your skills alone will take you to the gold medal or they won't. Um, that's the probably the biggest distinction within this sport. You know, that's something that I, I guess I really didn't understand. I did an interview with Layla Ali and she told me that her biggest regret, this was a big surprise, this was a big confession by her. She said her biggest regret is that she did not go through the Olympic Games because that is the only thing in boxing, these are her words, the only thing in boxing that will show you who the true champion is. And she said, I was 29 now, I got all these world titles. She said, Chia, they, they found a girl from a bar. I later found out. I'm out doing sprints in the morning. I think this is right. I later found out they found this girl from a bar somewhere along the way. And she does bring up a great point. Like, it's tough to know who is the best in the sport if you don't have a bracket. I love the Grand Prix and some stuff that, but that that isn't, Dana White does not follow that model. He has his own set. It's one of the reasons I respect the Ultimate Fighter so much. And we've also seen the guys that come through the Ultimate Fighter, man, they're ready for title shots. And a lot of them went on to become uh, title holders, but that's the closest, that's the only tournament we have. And I feel like the Ultimate Fighter should be embraced more. I feel it should be paid, advertised more because that is a real win. That is a, There is no way around it. You beat these guys in here. And it's just an observation. I mean, I love our sport and I, I, I respect it, but that is a side to it where if you don't have the mandate of the masses, which in this is being entertaining, you're not getting those opportunities. I don't know who the best 35 pounder is, man. I'm sitting by one. Marab might be one. Uh, Nurmagomedov might be one. But then there's some more entertaining guys that the fans have right, avoided. Right, right. There's, it's, almost like there, to it. it's almost like there's a purity when it comes to – you know, sports like amateur boxing, wrestling, taekwondo, judo, where if you come out of that bracket, we have to wait every four years to win a world championship Just or, or an Olympic gold medal. Yeah, whether you're whether you're shitting whatever the hell, whether you feel good or you don't, like you have to show up. And I think that's the beauty of sports like that, and, and particularly, you know, a sport like wrestling. But I also feel like. You know, so at times in combat sports, there is a position where somebody could be led to the front line. Hey, you know, this is a great matchup for you. Hey, why not? Why don't you get the more contender? Yeah. You're a better striker than him. Yeah. Guess what? This guy wins. He knocks him out. Fights for the title. Another great matchup. He becomes world champion. How do we help those guys get credit? Like, let's take Gable Stevenson. Let's just use a wrestler. Vince McMahon is going to offer him $2 million for one year of doing fake matches he just did four on nbc and nbc didn't even show him and he got nothing for it i mean just by example how does cable not get credit he got nothing for it. not olympic games he won four the best guys or he's oh, got to yeah, take yeah. on can, four can, of can them. i tell you something about that too yeah. like shells like doesn't even get watched you, nbc you, doesn't even air him sorry but, but you have to tell me a guy like gable stevenson or a guy like like they're going to regret them giving, like, the best of their youth away Boy, are they? to chasing entertainment and money. Yeah. Like, Gable Stevenson, at the age of 21, I was like, dude, I have never seen a heavyweight move like that. I'm like, dude, this dude can go out and win another Olympic gold medal, set himself apart from the rest, but yet now the UFC is not, not the UFC, the WWE is not allowing him to go to the Olympic trials because he has Tuesday night, Smackdown. Yep. Like, how stupid is that for for these guys to make that decision and and give away their youth? Yeah, I retired at 33, but I already accomplished what I wanted. These guys are in their mid 20s. Why are the Olympics at 21? And you follow before you, before you? Yeah, before you answer that, I mean, Henry. Now uh, you're 30. What? 37. 37 years young. 37. You have a significant years young. other. Years young. You have a significant <laughs> other. You have a child, right? Chael, you have a significant other. You have children. She's hot as F. Have you seen that girl I'm married to? Oh, my <laughs> God. This is a bomb rocket, this girl. I don't know how I got this girl. Okay. I was on parole, probate. I couldn't even leave the state. She lived in a different state. I had to go meet her parents. and had to tell her, hey, I can't do that because the office is closed. I can't, I can't leave the state. I'm on probation. She didn't know what it meant. 
She called her dad and said, hey, you got to come to Oregon. He's on probation. From the I, and I say that and to she say, still stayed with yeah, me. Go I ahead say with that point. to say, Henry, you go in and you, you chase that Olympic dream. Now, how much is in your, how much is that feeding your daughter now? How much is that pay your mortgage now? Well, at that time, I had no kids. At that yeah, time, but, it was yeah, just. Yeah, but had you gone in, look where you're at now. Had you gone in then to straight to MMA and foregone the, the amateur wrestling? Yeah, no, now. no, no. What, 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 I'm what, 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 then, you know, then, there's a then difference. The, then the priorities change. Then I will fight with one leg, with one arm, because I got to provide. But in a position where Gable Stevenson, a lot of these young guys, if you chase the money a little too early, you're going to give up a, a lot of those lofty dreams that you at one point felt that you will never go back to. Because why? Because now I got a boss by the name of Triple H or Vince McMahon says, no, you know what? We're going to keep you pure. You're going to be the Olympic champion forever. And you can no longer go out there and, and become something, become something abnormal and become a two-time Olympic gold medalist because now somebody's telling you, you can't. You can't. You understand what I'm saying, yeah. Uncle Cho? Oh, you don't understand the the the, the power and the uh, uh, of eligibility until it's gone. By the way, come on. I'm not positive I interpreted that right. No, so so what, were what you I'm supporting saying, yeah, what I'm, doing what I'm the is, amateur or were you saying he should have gone I'm to the pro is, sooner? I'm, what I'm saying is, is, Henry, as you're saying they're giving away their youth, I'm saying to you, now as a 37-year-old man who has a daughter and oh, has no, a mortgage. I, I, no, I'm chasing that money. Exactly. So, but not 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 if okay, I'm 25. Hold on, I'm okay. not quite getting this. Yeah, I, but, I need but, I need here to. <laughs> but what's wrong with what's wrong with those young men thinking forward like we're thinking backwards now? They're thinking, when I'm 37 and I have a wife and I have kids, I want to make sure that they don't have to worry about anything. I want to make sure uh, I don't I have get to the fight now. with a a a, a, but the, but the, but the, a hurt leg or anything like right, that. Right, right. But Camaro, this is why you need mentors. This is why you need guys like before, yes, and if, this mentor make, is saying, "Don't give up on that. Work, and go out and chase the Olympic dream, and maybe not have an income when you're 37 and you got a wife no, and kid no, no, and you're no, struggling." No, to pay they'll, they'll have an income. Yeah, I mean they'll survive. You won't be as loaded. <laughs> we you lived won't at be, the training center. How will I know, we survive? I, I, I know, I know when I get it, but you know the price of glory has to be paid, and it has to be paid. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I, I think of a guy like Gable Stevens. I'm like, all right, man, he's trying to be that Kurt Angle, but there's only one Kurt Angle. Sure. Like, I had to go out, be a little bit of Kurt Angle, be a little bit of the king of cringe, and then be a little bit of me. Yeah. What, what about the lack of guarantee that Gable's getting, though? I mean, they, they, WD said we want you to do this. His eligibility is at the NCAA tournament's in three weeks. He can't go back. They could fire him in three weeks. He's got no... I mean, I just, I'm, I'm attempting to judge somebody that's had a massive uh, level of success, but I also am judging a young man who's not educated, doesn't quite know the ways of the world. And I'm just saying, I think that, you know, I think he could have some regret. That's all I'm saying. What, what is it? Are they saying, are they saying that he cannot compete at the NCAAs? Which and is now up. The NCAAs but he has, but he has, and, he has a, and he has a $2 million contract. Yes. Which, which is not a is lot, bro. Hey, Kamaru, Kamaru, we, we've that made too. that money. That's not a lot of money, bro. That's Speak why for yourself. I've made no money. <laughs> oh, bro. This guy, this guy likes, to, he but, likes to let people okay, borrow but, six but, figures. <laughs> like, but, but real know. quick, it's something that I wanted to ask you, Chill, before we, we go. Well, you dabbled a little bit in politics. Yes. Uh, I believe you ran for uh, House. Yes. House back in. So judging by the landscape of politics right now, where, where, do you, where do you stand? Where do you see this going? Where is our country headed? Yeah, well, I mean, what a fascinating time, by the way. Like, I love the psychology of it. Sometimes when you ask me, uh, guys ask me about the way I spoke or the way I tried to build fights, I have never seen a sporting event in my life. I've never seen a whole basketball game or a whole uh, football game. I've seen, but not, not a whole game ever. Tried to watch the Super Bowl just a number of weeks ago. Didn't make it. Bought season tickets to a professional hockey league. Went to, I couldn't do it. Got up and went home. And, but I've seen every political debate there is. I appreciate that fight. I appreciate the body language. I appreciate the mannerisms. I appreciate that you're going to beat somebody. And uh, Floyd versus Connor is a great example within our sport that people have seen. That was an alpha male contest with Dana and Espinosa. I mean, it was so fascinating to watch those mannerisms, to me at least. 
So the reason I bring that up, Kamar, we are in such a different time. Like, uh, by example, they're bo- Trump and Biden are both uh, debating whether they're going to debate each other. That didn't used to be an option. If you wanted media, that's where the cameras are coming. You have to show up. Now you got social media. You don't have to show up to that at all. You can go on a YouTube channel. You can go set your own cameras up. You can take out your phone and post it around the internet. I mean, I'm just sharing with you, like, the world is changing very quick. And no one would have predicted that somebody could not show to a debate. That would be defeat. You would have lost. The other guy would have shown. They would have given him a victory by forfeit, if you will, and the election would be over. It's just not like that. Now, just for one example, but it's just not like that anymore. And and it's it, that's going to change quickly, even before for this cycle. There's going to be a lot of changes. Yeah. Well, can I say can I say one thing, Uncle Cho? Obviously, you've you know you've done a lot for our sport, and you've been- I am a tremendous guy. Yeah, you've been, uh, you know, you know, obviously, <laughs> obviously, obviously, only second to Mr. Triple C. Sure. But, uh, you know, we're here in Miami. We're here in the 305. Yeah, man. I mean, what happens if we cross the street and you see the one and only George Masvidal? If I saw George Masvidal, he brought three, four buddies with him. I'm alone. After a very brief skirmish, they would realize they should have brought more people. <laughs> wow. That is a very, very bad call. I mean, there's guys who do that. I, I don't know. I mean, I went my whole life. That I'm not going to let you get close. I'm yeah, not going to let you. Yeah. And I was tell a me what the rule is on that. Man, I, can, can, I, can I tell you a rule of mine, Uncle Chell? Yeah. Is that I, I never try to let somebody, especially if I have, be with them already, get past my damn jab. Or maybe be in kick length. So I remember going back and watching watching your tape with Vanderlei Silva. Yep. I'm not gonna let you get close. Yep. I'm not gonna let you get close. <laughs> boom, boom. You get too close. You, you guys, yeah, yeah, trust you, him. You guys still still start fighting. And, a guy like that. Obviously, we are entertainment. And obviously, I know you, Chell. But if a guy like that does come up to you, what what do you what, what do you do? Well, I would have to take George at his word only because of what George has in his past, right? With with Colby, he told Colby, and then he saw him and. And uh, I think George might have even painted himself in a picture with me. I mean, like, if he saw me and his buddies, I mean, we're in Miami. It's almost like he, he would have to. And I don't really know where that came from, by the way. I've gotten along with George really well. I actually needed a, a favor from him one time. He did it for me like that. He needed one from me. I did it like that. I don't actually know where that came from. But uh, he, he is in way over his head there. I mean, he acts like I broke every rule of every commission there is. He thinks I'm going to fight him fair. He doesn't think I'll stab him. I mean, I don't know. You know, some, there's some people... Anyway, let me tell you this, Henry, because you made a comment earlier, and you said, win my career. Why did you put it in past tense? Because you've been on the fence with that, so let's just clear that up for everybody. Why did, why, where is your career at? Ongoing or oh, right behind now, you? Right now it's ongoing, okay. but, for, but for you it's a little different. Okay. Unless you're making that comeback. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that what you're telling no, me? No, I'm Joe? talking about, you know, you had said, I'm, I'm going to retire something like that. And then you came out with, with something on social media, but it was kind of fun. It was kind of Henry esque where it was funny. And so I'm just I'm just wondering when you look at things, man, are you, I mean, they're, they're contesting your title tomorrow night. I mean, is that a division that you're staring at? Are you going to be I and Marab in the front row saying, man, I can't believe he's got I me? Mean, how does that feel inside? How are you? Are you, are you, you still got the eye of the tiger or are we moving on? Right now, that's my. I'm in the back of the line, and, and I know that. You know what I'm saying, and I know that. But that's a great way to steer the damn question because I still want to know what happens when you cross that street. Well, oh, you all right. he said. You he said if he has Madrid three guys though. with him. Yeah, they wouldn't have brought <laughs> yeah, enough guys. He, they shouldn't have brought. They wouldn't no. have brought <laughs> enough guys. No, they wouldn't have brought enough. Well, guys. Chill, um, I, I know you kind of you have to go, but it's one thing that I, I want to say is. Um, First and foremost, uh, you kind of paved the way for a lot of guys, you know, Keep you being on. just uh, not just an exceptional fighter, but also, you know, pivoting into now in the media space to where you're doing doing amazing things. You, you know, you were ESPN for a while. Now you're you're you got different shows going on. A lot of people love to sit every was every day. You drop a new episode on, on yep. your on your on um, your um, show on YouTube, YouTube and everybody loved to see sit and watch that and I have to let you know you know you guys just started a new, a new show you in DC and Henry on the show yesterday definitely said he's coming for you oh I so, love it so All as right. long as you know that but Competition. we, we, we have Chell, to let I'm you go coming. it's that been was a very pleasure nice. you, definitely it's been a pleasure you're still definitely blazing the trail or trail blaze or however they say that I think that blazing was right the trail blazing the trail for us so uh, for us wrestlers fighters 
and now getting into the media space and businessmen as well. If you guys were to discuss this with me out of the room, you, you were aware I would whip George Mosvalls. Like, you guys know someone cheerleader. You know, he got a little old, and I don't think he's on the same steroids. I am on the same steroids. I will whip his ass. There's a reason they weigh people yeah. in. I will whip his ass. I just there is not a long-haired man solid. walking the planet that Chael P has to worry about. Keep that in mind. Oh, my God. Well, it was a pleasure. Thank you, guys. And we are... All right, guys, we're back on another segment of Outside of the Cage. And guys, did you hear the new Henry, did you hear the freaking news that Jake Paul is going to be fighting Uncle Mike Tyson? No, honestly. Uncle on, Mike on, Tyson. Honestly, if I if I didn't look at your shirt, I would have never known Kamaru. <laughs> <laughs> He's fighting my uncle Mike Tyson. Bruh, it, it's it's crazy. It, it's crazy. I don't, I don't because like it, like, Kamaru. I don't like no, it, man. I, I agree. I, I feel like I understand wanting to be famous and I understand building yourself and I understand wanting to be a boxer as well and a, being a professional. But at some point, who someone has to be guiding this kid's career. Do you want to be taken seriously as a boxer or do you want to just be that famous YouTuber that, that did the boxing thing? Because I do think he's talented and I do think... Jake Paul can get good at boxing, but it's it's at what cost? At what level do you ex like? You expect me as a professional fighter, as a real fighter, to respect you for this, Henry? What do you think? Like, do I you mean, respect this decision? I mean, you know what? I respect Uncle Mike, and I guarantee you, if 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 uh, no, if, I'm talk. I'm not talking Uncle Mike. I'm talking about Jake Paul here. No, I know that, but obviously, you know, it takes two to tangle. And I feel like there's probably a really good payday for Mike. He's probably gonna, he's probably gonna wind up making about close to about twenty mil, as he's you know he's about to turn fifty eight years old. I mean literally, Jake Paul's twenty seven, Mike Tyson is fifty seven. He's getting ready to you know his birthday's he's gonna be fifty eight by the time he fights him. I know his birthday's in uh, uh, late June. I want to say so. I I think it's June 29th or twenty eighth. So tough it around that time, but I don't like it. But Mike Tyson, and, and I've been there, and I was with him when he was getting ready for the Roy Jones fight. Like, Kamaru, like, this dude's disciplined, dude. It's, he's almost like us. You know, he gets moody when he's in fight camp. He stops he stops smoking, uh, or he doesn't smoke as much. Um, you know, he just he, he starts to eat clean. He runs every day, uh, 5 in the morning. I remember I went with him one time, dude. I'm just like, damn, Mike, you run for 6 miles every morning at 5 a.m. I was like, yeah, man. It's it's good for the heart and you know I find peace within. But what I'm trying to say, man, is he's why you do why you do Uncle Mike's voice. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like Michael Jackson. But don't either way, do I don't Mike's like it. Voice. But if, but if there's but if there's anybody if there's anybody that's super ferocious that could potentially put this dude out a 27 year old kid, it is Mike because Mike does go down to the body. Mike is not going to give that dude distance. Mike is going to go. Boom, 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 boom. I just remember like back in the day when he was getting rid of people in 30 seconds. So I think that could be another thing. But he's no, also I, going I up like against it. a guy, you know, the youth, man. From I mean, that's a 30-year. That, that's 30 years, Kamaru. That's 30 years, bro. Uh, I, I, Henry, I, I agree with you for Uncle Mike. I'm not saying it, it's a bad decision for Uncle Mike. Uncle, Any fighter that's willing to still get in there and, and do it, they know what they're and, and has done it at the highest level. They know what they're doing. They know what they're risking. They know what they're getting in there for. So this is not saying Uncle Mike is, 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 is I don't like it because of Uncle Mike. No, it is what it is. Uncle Mike wants to do it. Uncle Mike definitely can do it. And we know like he can he can definitely still punch. He can definitely still uh, uh, still box. But for Jake Paul. A guy that says he wants to be taken serious. He wants to fight Canelo. He wants to fight the best in boxing. This is not the way to do it. This is not the route. Because now you're letting me know, are you chasing fame? Or are you chasing excellence in that sport? Because this is not. There's, there's, tough, there's guys you could fight. There's guys that are youthful, that are in the rankings, that are still contenders that, are, that you can fight. But you choose to bypass those guys because you want a big name as Uncle Mike, and which I think is probably the most famous or the most recognizable face in the world. So this is a lose-lose for Jake Paul. Jake, you don't, this is a lose-lose. 
You go, and this is my advice to you. This is, if I was the one advising you, I would tell advise against this because this is a lose lose. You can't go out there and 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 potentially, which is a potential. It's not. It's not guaranteed. Beat up Uncle Mike, the guy that's so loved by the world. And I, I, you you don't get no respect for that. You don't get no cool points for that. Let's say you go in there and you do beat up Uncle Mike. So you think now people are going to respect you. Oh, Jake Paul. Yeah, you beat Mike Tyson, 58-year-old Mike Tyson. No, you're not going to get the respect for that. It, in fact, I think it'd actually be worse. People might hate you more because it's Uncle Mike. Everyone loves Uncle Mike. But on the flip side, you go out there and you get put to sleep, which is a possibility because Uncle Mike still has that punching power. He's still ferocious and he will still come at you. You go out there and get put to sleep. Let's just go ahead and sign your the death certificate of your career. There's no more career after that. So I, I, if I was the one advising him, I don't think this is a good decision here. But for Uncle Mike, get that bread. Yes. Yeah, look at him. Look at him at 57 years old. Look at, watch Oof. him hit pass with Rafael Cordero. Yeah. It's crazy. But the, 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 this is stuff that a guy like Jake Paul ain't accustomed to. He ain't accustomed to somebody with an inside fighter. But... As you know, and as you get older, Kamaru, your recovery time changes. And 30 years, 30 years, uh, I mean, Jake Paul is literally 30 years younger. But if you think about it, too, I mean, look at look, look at who he wants to put on his belt. He's got Anderson Silva. He's got Nate Diaz. He's got Tyron Woodley. He's got, uh, he's got Ben Askren. I mean, he's got all these Olympians, former champions, Hall of Famers, and then now you're going up against Mike Tyson. I mean, Question, real quick, before you finish that statement, how many of those guys, individuals that you just mentioned, or champions or legends, how many of them were in any of their primes or any of their competitive uh, 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 states oh, that Jake no, Paul picked on them? None of them. None of them. Not none one. of them. But so, you know what? So I'm, then, I'm watching. So I'm watching how, can I give, how can I give respect at all? I'm watching, uh, I'm watching his highlights right now. This might be a good fight for Mike. It's a good fight for it's. it's I just don't like the fight. I'm gonna be honest. I don't like the fight, and, and and I might sound like I'm hating on it. I'm not hating on it. I'm just stating my opinion on it. I don't like the fight. I don't like it for for Jake in being in Jake's corner. If I was in Jake's corner and I was I was the one, uh, um, I was the one definitely influencing this guy. I don't like the fight for him at all. It's a lose lose. You don't win this fight. Mike is gonna hit you, and if he connects, you're asleep. Your career's done. Yeah. Or what you go in there and you beat up Mike Tyson. Yeah. Who's so loved? What? Who's loved? Yes. By who's the world. loved? So what? You will be hated more. And maybe that maybe that's what he's going for. I don't know, but you know, and it's no knock on him because I do think Jake Paul is definitely has improved a lot in his boxing. He's getting better. He's big, he's strong, and, and, and he's youthful. So I do think he, he can be a, a potential good boxer. But Well, I tell you what, though, Kamaru. I tell you what, Kamaru. That's one fight that I will never miss. Anytime Mike Tyson fights, I'm 100%. watching. 100%. I'm tuning in that pay-per-view. I'm going for Uncle Mike via knockout. I know he's going to get disciplined. I know, I know, I know what he's going to have to do to eventually get out there. But anyhow, that being said... That's all I got, man. We got to, you know, pretty much tune in and watch this dude's fight over the summer. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, um, well, we'll see. We'll see the best showing of, of both guys. But, you know, it's entertainment, and we are going to be entertained sometime in the summer. I think they said maybe July or something like that. doesn't matter. It's going to be entertainment. And as much as we like it or we don't like it, we are going to tune in and we are going to watch. So yeah, July that's 20th. another... That's another segment of Out of the Cage because they're technically in a ring. Henry, I'm the Nigerian Nightmare. And I'm Triple C.